Hey, we're Mads and Dan, and we're traveling around Australia in our self-converted van, Rio. In this video, we go to the heart of Australia, the Uluru and Catatuta National Park. We spent three unforgettable days there, slowing down, listening, and taking in the magic of the place. At the end of this video, we will share our five top tips for anyone going here in a van. We are so thankful to the Anangu people, the traditional owners of this land, for allowing us to explore this sacred place and learn their stories. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. We are in the Northern Territory, which is so exciting. Like, second time attempt, but all good. Like, nothing has changed since 10 days ago when we tried and then saw that the border closed on us, like, before we even got there. So, yeah, we're super happy. We are traveling down the Stuart at high breakneck speeds. Actually, we're about to slow down, but 130 kilometers in the Northern Territory, which Dan's super excited about. Um, and I think we're going to reach Shulara today, which is epic because we didn't think we would. We think we'd just stay at a roadside camp, but we've made good time. And yeah, we're just super excited to be here and to be able to explore Uluru. Yeah, it's going to be a good like two weeks, I think, we've got here. So yeah, really excited. We woke up at 5.30 just so that we'd like not be in a massive traffic jam trying to get in um, and we're first in the queue so that's good. We just pulled up here, made some coffee, been chilling and we're so excited. It's going to be a really good day. actually a sunset spot but we got here for sunrise um just to like get a different perspective it's our first day in the national park but it's so pretty and we got like a whole red sky and everything like it's really really cool <laughs> to return um it's just it's a good little perspective we're gonna do the base walk tomorrow we've got three days here so we're just taking it slow we went to the sunrise um which was awesome we didn't actually go to the sunrise viewing platform because we're gonna do that tomorrow but we just based ourselves for a whole day at the sunset car park and we left the van there and walked like three kilometers to the cultural center and it's like a like 30 minute walk but it was so beautiful to see like different parts of Uluru um and then we went to the cultural center and learned a lot about aboriginal law and culture here um and what Uluru means to them we just want to take it slow enjoy our time here take it all in <laughs>
here. So we got here at 6.30 this morning in the park, but arrived to the gates at 20 to 6 to secure our parking spot. Then walked three and a half kilometers in town and back to make sure we didn't compete with anyone for our parking spot. It's school holidays, so we were expecting it to be so busy. The woman at the water was like, oh, everyone's going to Uluru. So, so the campground's so busy. <laughs> seven kilometers later of walking to make sure we don't lose our spot. <laughs> There's so many people here. <laughs> but in being fair to Mads, this is a hell of a spot. So yeah. we've got a good spot and there's a good view right there. The sticker collection grows one more. This is arguably one of the best ones, actually. It's a pretty cool one. Yes. Making our way all the way around. she had envisioned when we walked seven kilometers back and forth. So we're just busy watching the sunset. We're on the roof deck. We've got a nice cheese platter going. The view. We've got um, um, wine from Down Barabra Hall Wines, which we went to a couple of weeks ago in Peru. Yeah, super, super nice. And yeah, can't complain about the view. It's pretty good. Cool. Snacks and a hat. Action.
enjoyed that we had the best time at Uluru and it's such a bucket list item we were so pleased to go we have a few tips which we thought about when we were there which we would recommend to anyone going in a van our first one is to wake up really early for the sunrise the gates open at different times throughout the year according to when the sun rises but we were always getting to the gates about half well, 45 minutes I think on the first day and then half an hour on the next days before they open and we happen to be the first ones each time with people coming like straight after us yeah, um, big big queues kind of for 
yeah it can take you a while to get through and every single time we were going through like, first light was just starting so that is such a magical time at Uluru so we would definitely recommend getting there rather than getting there for when the sun like actually rises because the colours have kind of gone. Definitely get there when it's dark so you can get the full experience for sunrise. Um, we found that going to the sunset spot for sunrise was actually probably better than the designated sunrise spot. Um, we went to the sunrise spot and it's just really, really, really crowded. You've got to walk to the sunrise spot and so then it's just packed. There's lots of cameras, tripods, etc. Um, we definitely 100% preferred the sunset spot for sunrise because you can be in your van, you can, you know, chill. There's n almost no one there because everyone rushes to the sunrise spot. So the sunset spot is actually empty. Um, yeah. So much more peaceful. <laughs> yeah, we and like. And you can watch it. We lay here. Yeah, made coffee, mm -hmm. lay in bed. At certain times of the year, the the sun will rise directly behind it, creating like a silhouette. But. For the time of year we were there, which was uh, July, July, it, it came on from the side, so it actually lit up the rock really, really nicely, and some of our favourite photos were from there. Mm. Our third tip would be to budget for the $30 a night you will pay at the campsite. There is a free camp rest stop area about an 45 minutes out of the Uluru National Park but the campsite in the kind of resort area in Yulara is 100% worth it just for the convenience you don't have to drive at night through the outback with all the wildlife and everything um, and there's always space the website's slightly misleading but there's an overflow and so even if it says it's fully booked you can stay there there'll be space in this huge overflow area at the back which was probably a bit better we reckon yeah definitely ask for the overflow even if they have space in the campsite the campsite was packed like and the sites were really small so overflow was awesome big 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 open land just park wherever you want uh, then tip four would be to do the base walk so we did that on our second day I think and it was really nice it's it's huge obviously it takes a long time to walk around but there's a, a lot of um, info kind of graphics that go around the base walk so you learn a lot about the history and there's like um, a few sections where you can get up real right up and close so really recommend that base walk if you're obviously able to it did take a long time so we did see people hiring bikes which obviously is a lot quicker yeah it was we liked doing the walk even though it took two and a half hours and it's about 11 and a half kilometers um just because you can really take it all in and stop and read and yeah. you just spend a lot of time looking at this huge rock <laughs> it's awesome because you're right next to it for most of the walk so it's definitely good uh, just take a lot of water like at mm. least like a liter per person minimum because yeah, it did take two and a half hours and the sun was out even though we were there in winter it was mm. still quite hot and snacks take snacks yeah we were glad we brought our snacks we decided to leave at lunchtime which was a bit silly but yeah. we brought snacks our tip number five is the sunset viewing area is really good but it can get super crowded we're lucky we've got the roof deck so we could sit up above the crowds and still get an unobstructed view but we would also recommend there's some like bits which you're allowed to pull over. There's parts of the road where you can't pull over through the national park, but there are some which you can, and we would recommend maybe venturing just beyond the sunset viewing area and get your own private spot, because we did that in one of the nights and it was really nice. A lot more quiet, less mm, like less photos people. being taken and stuff. Yeah, if you do choose to go to the sunset spot, just get there like at least an hour before the sunset because it gets mm. very busy. The rock really it's, lights up and glows. Yes, yeah, that, that was the highlight for us, the sunsets at Uluru. They were just incredible. Yeah. Um, That's another reason to stay in the campsite actually because then you don't have to drive like an hour afterwards. You just drive like 10 minutes and you're mm. there. And it, you got to stay for sunset, it's so good. Yeah, definitely. So we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any questions, you can comment on the video or message us on Instagram. Yeah, our Instagram is 
at Tranquila Travels um, and you can follow us on there for a slightly more up-to-date version of our travels um, and next week we'll be going to the West Max and Alice Spring and finishing off the Red Centre.